Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's February 4th, 2019, and you are watching the Theo Trade evening video. The bell has just gone off. The S&P's ripped right into today's close. Google is due out any second, so we're going to keep a pretty good eye on the futures here. As I said, Google is due out with earnings just after the closing bell. I don't think we'll have to look very far to uh, see some of the effects of Google as uh, both the S&Ps and the NASDAQ futures are very likely to move on those numbers. Nevertheless, what is going on inside of today's trade? And more importantly, what can we do about it? To begin with, in uh, in tonight's video, I want to discuss a little bit about what we term kind of the short gamma trade, because uh, that right there is what's impacting the S&P futures. Now, not to completely geek out on everybody but when i start talking about things like short gamma trade sometimes people just they kind of shut down effectively what it means you get a lot of traders and trading firms that are short premium okay what this makes us effectively is short delta okay how do they get short delta they do things out there okay like short calls okay and or short puts for those of you again if you don't speak geek they're out there and they're selling options and they're selling options very often naked okay so as the marketplace starts to rally you produce what we term negative delta what does negative delta means well it means in many cases you either need the market to go down or you're going to be taking heat to the upside so what the trading firms do when they're short delta is they go out and they have to add positive delta Okay, this is just basically being short stocks. So don't don't get all crazy about thinking about short delta as I don't know what it means. Okay, if you're short delta, you basically short stock, or in this case, short the S and P's. So what do they have to do? They have to turn around and they have to buy the S and P's. And what we see, okay, and what's real evidence about this, right, is specifically the movement that you see towards the end of the trading day is they all kind of rush in. Again, they rush in for their hedges towards the end of any given trading session. And that is uh, evidence right here as we come towards the closing bell of this short gamma trade kind of in play. What we're actually getting again is this kind of burst to the upside in the last 10 to 15 minutes of trade as everybody kind of rushes in. Now that again can reverse rather rapidly. I just wanted everybody to know, you know, what we see inside of the marketplace. By the way, the uh, the S&Ps, because the short gamma trade is kind of in play, the S&Ps, really important to know, they are adhering almost to the dollar, okay, to their expected moves. Now, to show you a little bit about the expected moves, I'm going to cruise over to the Analyze tab. I'm going to actually jump here to, uh, to what's termed Think Back. And what Think Back does, it just shows you, again, uh, end of day kind of data. But what I'm looking at in this particular case is we're just going back to uh, to Friday, right? So again, we're showing February 1st data. Why are we showing February 1st data? Because on Friday, on Friday, the Monday expiration, which is today, right? Today's February 4th. The Monday expiration was looking for right around, what? About a $17 and change move. The actual move today is right there. It's about 18 bucks. Okay. And this is something that we've seen kind of day in and day out. It's one of the reasons I've been screaming. I'm like, don't go out and sell options premium. doesn't make a whole lot of sense to sell options premium when we're effectively moving right to the edge of the options premium. That is, again, efficiency, if you will, in a marketplace. Now, with that, again, short, you know, the short gamma trade is really just driving a lot of the intraday trade. But I have to tell you, overall, net net, when you start looking at the S&P futures and uh, and again, you know, awaiting earnings with uh, with bated breath. You start looking at the S&P futures. I wouldn't read a whole lot into this. First of all, we only traded 955,000 contracts today. 900,000 contracts, we didn't even hit a million contracts. Okay, how light is that? Uh, today's trading session was uh, more boring than the Super Bowl. Yes, yes, it was. And uh, I'm sorry to have to say that, but uh, the game wasn't that good and neither was today's trading session watching the grind to the upside. Now, let's cruise over to Google because it does look like we have something happening. And then we're actually going to talk a little bit about, well, the theme of today's video, which is going to be a bit about hedges. So uh, we are looking at Google coming out after the bell again after the bell we're expecting right around a 50 dollar expected move you guys know okay i rely upon those expected moves heavily 
Google effectively closed at 1141. Where is it right now? Well, it's it's off. You can see the bid offer spread though is so wide you could drive a truck right through it. And uh, here we go. Google is effectively now moving to the downside. But listen, this is just seconds, just seconds after its numbers have come out. Now, okay, for those of you kind of interested in here, do I have skin in the game? And the answer is absolutely, okay? I like to take trades around earnings. And uh, in this particular case, I happen to have none other than a bearish position. There we go. So we've got a bearish position and that is now deep in the money. Um, that one looks like it's uh, it's gonna play out. But again, you know, it's it's early. You know, you have to give it time, give time for the conference call to kind of play out before we start to uh, to count our little chickens. I mean, listen, it's going to be a long week, especially with the $50 expected move inside of Google. But uh, Google not having, again, not having a massive impact on the S&P futures. The NASDAQ moved uh, to the tune of about 20 points off Google. But as I said, the evening is kind of young on that front. All right, let's kind of get to the theme of today's video. And one of the major themes of today's video is that for those of you, you know, you're like, ah, oh, it's kind of a boring trading session. Yeah, I get it. But the volatility has contracted, all right? The VIX has contracted and it's contracted enough to where we can actually get your hedges back on. What does that mean, okay? Well, it's been a while since we've been able to do this, but if you're looking for either number one, a downside shot, what do I mean by a downside shot? I don't know. You look at this marketplace and it's rallied back a whole lot recently, right? So we've rallied back, you know, all the way back into our, uh, you know, our quote unquote volatility box right here, right in the exact same neighborhood uh, at this point in time. If you want that downside shot, if you look out in time, okay, and you think that the S&Ps have the chance to just absolutely tank again, I'll give you that downside shot right here, right now. Or if you're looking to get a hedge on, you can go out. And for those of you that are members, of course, of Theo Trade, okay, the atomic hedge strategy is pricing once again effectively. I'm going to say that again. The atomic hedge strategy is, again, pricing effectively. What that effectively means is that you can get a hedge on for your 401ks, your IRAs. If you need a hedge, you can go right on out, you know, between 39 days and maybe even a little further out in time and use that atomic hedge to protect uh, protect the downside of your portfolio. Now, that's not necessarily the hedge that I'm going to show right now. The atomic hedge is very much tailored for each individual portfolio. The hedge I'm going to show you right here, right now, and by the way, as I'm saying this, you can see the uh, market's backing off a little bit more here on those Google numbers. The hedge I'm going to show you right now is either a hedge or it's a shot to the downside. And this trade, again, this is the risk twist spread. And I elaborated upon it mildly, again, mildly in a uh, in a previous kind of video last week. But to spend a bit more time on it, when I talk about like a downside shot, okay, to construct this trade is relatively easy. To understand the trade though is, is a, again, a, uh, a vastly different kind of topic. But all I wanna do at this point in time, okay, is give you, okay, effectively how to you know how to construct this trade what it's going to look like what it's pricing at so here we have it's a one by three by one i'm going to say that again it's a one by three by one you're selling one buying three okay selling one it's a risk twist spread it's designed to help offset some of the skew the implied skew in uh in the puts now what the trade does now i'm going to cruise over to the analyze tab because i already have one built in here and i'm going to bring this up under risk profile for you Okay, I'm gonna close up that left side bar. Let's get to it. This is what the risk twist spread looks like. Now, when you initially look at the risk graph, everybody looks at this, they go, oh no, you could take a hideous loss. You're right, one contract can lose $1,000, but we'll never hold this position long enough to lose $1,000. So what I suggest people do is they use what's called day stepping. Okay, and then this is where, uh, you know, sometimes again, the first time people see this, they're like, that's it, I'm out, I'm out of the contest. I don't think I could do that one. Um, when it comes to things like day stepping, I'm just gonna widen it, expand the day step, just to take you a little bit in April. This is perfect, okay? What I did in terms of the day step, and I'll show you here on Thinkorswim, okay? It's just, again, 
you know, one, two, three, four different periods. All I'm showing you is how the trade is maturing, okay, at different periods of time. And I would never hold the trade beyond, for instance, this last period of time. So the maximum sustainable risk is gonna be rather mild. It's a shot to the downside. Now the risk twist pricing here, it isn't exactly as spectacular at this point in time. The risk twist pricing, eh, it's like a buck 82. Ideally, I wanna pay less than $1.60 for one of these things. But look at the phenomenal shot that it gives you. Here is the market right now. If we start to tank, you start to see the, um, you know, the effects of the risk twist. But to really show you what the risk twist can do, I just want to, you know, simulate the volatility going up. Now, the VIX is at about 15 right now. This would simulate the VIX not at 15, but the VIX jumping back up to what? About 25, okay? And I'm going to hit enter and you're going to see the trade explodes, starts to literally explode in value. This is one contract in the spiders. I can't stress that enough because people get, you know, all bent out of shape. This is a one by three by one. Okay. Again, we couldn't lose if you exit this trade properly and you have to follow the criteria that we allotted for this risk to a spread. For those of you that are members, fantastic. Check out the risk to a spread class. If you're not a member, check out the risk to a spread class. It's called the next big short and make sure you got the criteria down and down pat for this thing. So as the market starts to sell off, the trade literally explodes. And the point being, this is just one you know, by three by one. It's what we call one unit of the trade. One unit of the trade, if we come down anywhere near, for example, 240, which we were just at 240 just a few weeks ago uh, on the spiders, the trade's gonna make anywhere from a thousand bucks on up to all oh, about 1700, depending upon the date. Any further than that, and you know, it's, it's again, that's one unit and that's again, it's in the spider. So I can't stress to you enough, it's uh, of the most powerful trades that you can possibly utilize for a, uh, for a nice shot, if you will, to the downside in the markets. Again, that, the atomic hedge, they're all back in play right now with lower volatility. Nevertheless, okay, as I'm saying this, as I'm saying this, well, Google now is off by about 40 bucks. So, ooh, maybe volatility won't be so low by the time we get to uh, tomorrow morning. But uh, again, we got this one right for those of you that are Theotrade members. If you uh, tuned in this morning or this afternoon, we talked specifically about this trade uh, within the chat room. We put on a bearish trade within Google. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight here at Theotrade and uh, have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.